What is up, NBA fans? I am Jason Burgos for Sports Not, and I have the absolute pleasure of being joined by one of the top names in NBA reporting for the last 30 years, people. He currently <laughs> serves as a top reporter and analyst for Fox Sports, and he is here to talk the NBA trade deadline and so much more. And that man I speak of is the one, the only, Rick Buecher, Senor Buecher. Thank you so much for the time today. My pleasure. My pleasure. Good to be with you. So... I, first topic I got to get into, and it's based off a story that kind of came out this week, and that's was um, it seems like Steph Curry likely, and everybody aside from Steph Curry, everybody in the, the Golden State Warriors may be up for grabs before the trade deadline. You know, yeah. the, the signs that the the end of the dynasty was near kind of started last year. This year has really solidified that with all the different variant things. How do you think they approach the deadline, the Golden State Warriors? Is it full sell to kind of cut the massive costs they've had, try to maybe get some draft assets, those kinds of things, build around some of the young players they like and Steph, or will they try to be creative, maybe remodel the team in a more cost-effective way, stay competitive, and that's why we hear this Yakum rumors. Yeah, no, I, I would not expect a full yard sale where they're just clearing the decks and moving people. Generally, that doesn't happen during the during the season anyway, going up to the trade deadline. Um, you, you much... I mean, if, if it's going to be capital, if it's going to be draft asset, assets and all of that, you want to know where those draft picks sit. Uh, and you're not going to know that until the end, after the season and the draft lottery, and you know exactly what you're, you're, you're trading for. And, and in some cases, that wouldn't be as important because you're just looking for future picks, right? But when you're talking about having Stephen Curry, you're still trying to compete now. And yeah. so you're, you, you want to know, you want to get draft picks that are in this coming draft and operate from there. I don't know that they can, that, that, that going wholesale is really going to work anyway, because it's not like they have an abundance of assets in terms of where their players are and their value. Yeah. Clay Thompson's value is probably that he's a pending free agent and you could have yeah. him for the rest of the year and then decide what you're going to pay him going forward. Uh, Chris Paul, sort of the same situation. So I, I, I would expect that they are, I fully expect that they're going to make a move. Joe Lacob did not expect this, never expects to lose, never expects not to be a title contender, as unrealistic as that might be. So they will make a move. I don't believe that it's going to be, I, and, and it, whether it's an Andrew Wiggins or, and I, I think that's the likeliest piece that would move, uh, is, mm. is Andrew Wiggins trying to upgrade there. And then hoping that Draymond Green coming back, Chris Paul getting back from his hand injury, that they can make the most of this. But th here's the other part, is in terms of making massive changes. They've spent half a season trying to get comfortable with the new pieces that they've already incorporated yeah. to then like flip it over and we're going to change everything again. I don't know that it gets them any closer to making the playoffs and really making the playoffs at this point is probably the, the ultimate goal. Anything after that would be a bonus. Speaking of kind of teams that are in a trouble spot, we have to talk about the Lakers. Rob Palenka had a very kind of like Brian Cashman with the Yankees sort of trade deadline last year where he made these good mid to smaller level moves that really helped them out a lot in the yeah. second half. But all signs kind of point to that, them being very resistant of a bunch of trades again before this deadline. Could you explain why the team may not be jumping at the chance to go after Zach Levine, like has been rumored, and how bad will it need to get before they kind of maybe do make roster changes or some may say make a head coach change? Well, one, Zach's number is just huge. And, yeah. and it goes out. So you're really looking at we're building around Zach Levine and Anthony Davis going forward. Mm -hmm. And how much does that excite you as a, as, <laughs> as a, yeah. as a Los Angeles Laker? Yeah. Now, I'm a big Zach Levine fan. I'm, I'm probably in the minority. I think that he is um, – I, I don't know that he's a number one. And he's been through a lot in Chicago. I think his game has improved. Uh, I do think that he is a special type of scorer. I don't think he's a great playmaker. I don't think you mm. play through him necessarily. Yeah. If you can kind of put him in more of a Kyrie Irving role uh, that, that Kyrie has with Luka Doncic, where 
You're going to do a little bit of playmaking, but pretty much you're in there, and your job is to yeah. is to get us buckets. My problem with the Lakers is that Zach Levine is a very expensive uh, uh, piece, and I don't know that he makes them a pre- like. I don't. It's not a difference maker. They're they're they have a lot of they have a lot of issues, and and I think the heart of it is if you're going to play Anthony Davis and LeBron James. Those guys are now that LeBron James is now a power forward center. Yeah. He's not a point forward anymore. I mean, he gets the ball on the perimeter and operates there from a lot, but how many times do you see him break somebody down and then find somebody? Like yeah. You see Austin Reeves do that more than than LeBron. <laughs> um Anthony Davis really isn't a playmaker. He's having a phenomenal year as a defensive uh, backbone, and I believe that he's one of the big reasons why their defense is as good as it is. Mm. So I just is that so Zach Levine's not a playmaker. Like D'Angelo Russell is somewhat of a playmaker, but he's going to hurt you at the defensive end. Austin Reeves, uh, somewhat of a playmaker, is going to hurt you at the defensive end. Like in my estimation, they just don't have enough two-way players, and what. Raw, I, I, it's just unrealistic to me that you're going to go back to the well and think that Rob Polinka can do again what he did last spring. Because yeah. what they did after he did what he did last spring is that then, then they signed Austin Reeves to big money. They signed Rui Hachimura to big money. And that's why they had to go and get the Christian Woods and the Jackson Hayes mm-hmm. and, and like the, the, yeah. you know, the, the bargain bin additions. And the problem is, is that those guys, well, it looks good. Uh, we have more size. Everybody got excited in Lakerland because they had more size. You can't play Christian, Christian or Jackson Hayes with Anthony Davis and LeBron James because it means somebody's got to guard a wing. <laughs> and, uh, you, pick your, you take your choice as to which one of those guys you want guarding one of the just, – uh, just a, an athletic wing in the league. That guy's going to be spending all day getting into the paint. So um, I, I just – I don't – there's this unrealistic vision that the Lakers, because they did it last year, that, well, just, you know, Rob, do it again. Just do it again. Re, you know, reshuffle the team, and and we're on our way. And I, the, one of the other parts is – and I don't – is – and I'm one of the few who seems to be willing to say it. LeBron James's offensive numbers look great. They mm-hmm. look great. It's a testament to how smart he is and his IQ in finding ways to score. If, if he sees the opportunity to get to the rim in transition, he's taking it yeah. he's, and, and, and finishing. Um, he's shooting three-pointers at, at, a, at a higher percentage, last I checked, at a higher percentage mm-hmm. than, um, than he ever has. That's not making everybody else better. That's getting him his buckets, right? Yeah. And defensively, he's a nightmare. Like, I mean, he <laughs> – go back and watch the Toronto game. He didn't – eat for the first three quarters, uh, he was on Scotty Barnes. He didn't – he wasn't contesting his threes. He wasn't – he wasn't doing anything. And then fourth quarter – they had Anthony Anthony Davis guarding Scotty Barnes because it was like we we can't we're not winning this game if we if we don't change this up, um, and look and I say that I don't say that as a criticism. He's thirty nine years old. It's amazing what he's doing at thirty nine years old. Hmm. I point that out because whether it's he or anybody else who says yeah LeBron's the, as good as he ever was. I'm like. <laughs> you gotta be out of your out of your mind. Like there are three components that made him uh, one of the best. One, because he could defend. Uh, two, because he could p- make plays. And three, because he can score. I- I'm only seeing one of those on a consistent basis at this point. Yeah. So yeah. he's not. He shouldn't be the same. He's not the same. It's okay to admit that at this point. But because he's not the same, and the Lakers are have always been so LeBron centric since he got there, mm-hmm. that's at the heart of like mm-hmm. trying to make this work. 
Yeah. I mean, so going to that point about the, their lack of a playmaker and kind of bringing back in the Warriors, I mean, there's not a lot of options on the market. Would a trade for Chris Paul make sense? Could, could that happen? I mean, Paul and, and LeBron have been friends for years. They always want the team up. Would that be a yeah. way to go then? I, uh, Chris Paul, Draymond Green, uh, because he's a playmaking forward uh, mm. and, and, and also would – is close with LeBron, so um, yeah, I, I don't. Or would the I Lakers don't do? Know, it? I, it, the, I, I think Draymond actually would make more sense because Chris isn't going to play fast, and mm, okay. and LeBron in doesn't want to play in the half court at this stage. If he's going to play in the half court, he's posting up, so he's looking for transition for transition buckets. Um, I mean, either one, yeah, sure, yeah, take a shot. I, I, <laughs> I am, re- I, I would believe that the Warriors would be reluctant to trade in division, in mm-hmm. conference, because as things stand, the Lakers and the Warriors are kind of battle. They're in the same yeah. stratosphere, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> they're both playing to play, get in the play-in games at this point. Um, yeah. And then the question is, who are you getting back? Like, Rui Hachimura, I think, is being totally underutilized in mm. in in Lakerland. Um, and I think a big part of it is just because LeBron is almost exclusively playing power forward now. So how do you get yeah. how do you get Rui on the floor? How do you get him into his sweet spots? Um, but. Yeah, so I could see that. I could see uh, Zach Levine. I think would be um, would be a good move for the Warriors. If you, I mean, the, the Bulls are an expensive, under uh, performing team. So if you said, um, we'll give you uh, Andrew Wiggins and Chris Paul for uh, for uh, um, Lonzo Ball. And uh, and Zach Levine, the numbers work. Hmm. And in a case like with the Warriors and Zach Levine, Zach Levine could be that at 28 years old could be the running the running partner to Steph Curry now in the backcourt. Hmm. And I believe, honestly, and again, like you're playing off him. If you keep Draymond Green, then Zach Levine doesn't have to be a playmaker. He, you got you got Steph, and you have. Draymond there uh, to set him up and he's electric athletically and that's what they need that's kind of what they miss because yeah. Clay Thompson is that no more yeah. um, so there, there aren't any perfect solutions out there the move with the, the Chris Paul uh, and I don't know what Lonzo Ball if Lonzo Ball is healthy again now you're adding another interesting piece to the Warriors uh, Chris Paul goes in and he's able to mentor Kobe White, who looks like he's the future in the backcourt for the mm-hmm. Chicago Bulls, the way he's playing. Um, and the the and the Bulls have an opportunity to get off some money, uh, which I would think is 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 something that they, they want to do. And the Warriors, the Warriors don't have a problem taking on that Zach Levine. It, it may be one of the few teams in the league that doesn't yeah. have a problem taking on. That yeah. Zach Levine country uh, uh, contract because they're used to, to to spending a lot of money on their players. Speaking of of, of teams making trades and point guards, um, r- recent rumblings connecting the Heat and Donovan Mitchell. It seems like any star who's available, all oh, the Heat are involved. And then when it yeah. comes time, the Heat don't get it done. Yeah. Should like Miami Heat fans just kind of come to terms? Like it's just not going to happen. Maybe they don't have the assets to really make these big trades, and especially with, with Hero playing well this year, maybe they, okay, we, we, this is our big three. Or is this the time? Is, is this finally time? Maybe they're this the surprise dark horse, and they finally do make a big move. Well, if anything would make, play, uh, would make GMs around the league hesitant to make a deal for Miami Heat's young up-and-coming players, uh, the Gabe Vincent story in, in Lakerland would mm. probably be a cautionary tale. Wasn't good when he was healthy. Now he yeah. isn't healthy, and so there's there is this this feeling around the league that you go and get the young guys from uh, mm. from from Miami. Yeah. They're they're not the same when when they play yeah. they play someplace else. 
Um, you know, Port the Portland fans are still kicking themselves that they didn't do the Damian Lillard thing because they could have gotten uh, uh, Jamie Yaquas and um, and 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 a couple of pieces down there that, that are looking so good for Miami now. Those young yeah. guys, in comparison to what Portland has, yeah. Um, but I don't know that he would be that guy. Their their player development is second to none, and. So I, what I'm impressed by with, with the Heat is just they seem to be doing it again. They did it with Max Struess. They did it with, with Gabe Vincent. Like yep. Their ability to find young guys and develop them. Um, and I'm sorry, I'm, with, with Yaquez, I'm trying to remember. Does he pronounce his first name? He doesn't pronounce it. He pronounces it Jamie, right? He doesn't pronounce it. I think so. Jaime. I think so. Yeah, I think so. Um, I've, uh, I, I always listen, I listen to games with the sound down, so I yeah. don't, or with the, with the broadcasters off. So yeah. there's every now and then there's a new name that comes by and I'm like, you know what? I'm saying this on air for the first time and I've never heard it said. <laughs> um, so there's, there's, there is that. And I don't, I'm not really, I'm not really sure what the love affair with Donovan Mitchell is, to be honest with you. Huh? I think he's a very good player. I don't I don't think he's I don't think he's a great I think he's a little bit like Bradley Beal. Like really good player, scorer, heard he's a great guy, but is like how close has he got to playing for a championship? Exactly. Very when true. did Bradley Second Beal round and out. like like okay, you can get me to the playoffs. Good players can get teams yeah. to playoffs. But what else can you – and did it – like Russell Westbrook was a big part of Bradley Beal getting – like Bradley Beal's always had a second yeah. star, really quality yeah. second star there, made the playoffs, didn't do much more than that. Donovan Mitchell kind of same thing. Most people look at what happened in Utah and they, they, they credit Rudy Gobert as being that guy mm. that gets you to the playoffs. Maybe he doesn't do anything more than that. But as a regular season guy, he's the guy that, that, that makes your team a, a 50 win team. So I like it's hard for me to look at Donovan you know and New York Knicks fans are all over like we got to get Donovan Mitchell. you know if we only we could get Donovan Mitchell. I'm like, eh, where's Cleveland right now? <laughs> Relying on, on Donovan Mitchell. Yeah. I mean yeah. and and they've had lots some other losses, but I, I just I'm not one of those. And and for where I am and what I do now, like it's not like I'm out there beating the bushes to find out who's going to be traded, where. It's like yeah. I'm looking at the league and going, what interests me the most? What mm -hmm. player would change the landscape of the league or a you know a certain situation? And I'll explore that. I'll try to find mm. that out. I'm not like yeah. I don't. I, I never wanted to be Woj or Shams, <laughs> and I certainly don't have no interest. That that just seems like the most thankless job in the world. Like just yeah. I, uh, hammering hammering agents and and GMs <laughs> like to to uh, to find out you know whether they're gonna move their G League player and whatever. Mm -hmm. so. Anyway, See, this is why I digress. This is, what, this is why you're the best in the business because you purpose. You didn't even know you purposely, perfectly transitioned right into my next question because it was about the Knicks. You went right there. You had there me you set go. up already. So the Knicks. I, I'm, a, I'm a lifelong Knicks fan. Absolutely love the OG trade. Um, Mitch Robinson possibly coming back for the playoffs it, it could make them just trouble defensively. Just yep. a nasty team. Is yep. you know is it especially since you made a great point with Don Mitchell, maybe he's really not the, worth the squeeze. Um, should they maybe go smaller? And I feel they maybe should go smaller moves too, just to, to shore up certain areas. If maybe if Mitchell doesn't come back, center depth, uh, bench depth. Is a, is a guy like a Malcolm Brogdon to improve their bench and stuff like that, oh. get another playmaker, is that where they go uh, at the trade deadline? Maybe they don't wow. go big. I hadn't heard that name connected with the Knicks, but yeah. I mean, that would it, the, the, I think that's a great name. And a great piece for what they have. Because, let's face it, Tom Thibodeau is not an offensive coach. No. And when Jalen Brunson goes to the bench, their offense yeah. just grinds to a halt. 
Yep. They, they, they would be very well served having a second playmaker. I, I would say that Malcolm Brogdon would do more for them than, the, than DeJounte Murray would. Who would and that's another name mm. we've heard yeah. connected, connected to them. And I just, you know, I, uh, watching Atlanta, like, I, I, at one point, Murray and Trey Young were supposed to be boys, and it doesn't look like that now. Yeah. It was a game recently where they came down at the end of it, and Trey came to get the ball, and DeJounte just ignored him and Oof. went pull up jumper, air ball, end the game. It was like it was a really bad look. And would he have more respect for Jalen Brunson? Uh, because Jalen plays at both ends, yeah. uh, possibly. So you might get a different DeJounte. But I'm a little nervous now. With mm. He was in San Antonio, talked his way out of there, went to Atlanta. That was supposed to be. He's hooking up with his, you know, his BFF. Yeah. Now that's not working out. Um, you know, he's, he's got those John Collins vibes at this point. Like, mm. eh, it might not... May not be the situation, <laughs> might be the guy. Um, but no, I Brogdon, I, I, I love that idea. And I do think that Robinson coming back and what they could be defensively and kind of the chemistry they have and yeah. and the 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 Eastern Conference just being a jumble, right? Yeah. Like I'm not I'm not really overwhelmed by Milwaukee. Uh, Philadelphia I think will probably make a move. I'll be interested to see that, but you know, until Joel Embiid shows me he's got lasting power where he can get through the season mm, and man. then make a deep playoff run. I need to see it at this point, if not from a yeah. mental standpoint, a physical standpoint, that he's capable of that. Um, uh, so yeah. Boston's there, and I'm not a big believer in Boston. I think they're vulnerable. Mm. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I, I mean, strange as it is to say, because I have a lot of – Knicks fans who are friends and they're always like so unrealistic about what their team is capable of. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Knicks fans are just like they're like Lakers fans. They're the same yeah. thing. Like yeah. with 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 less reason yeah. <laughs> to believe that they're going to win it to win it all. I guarantee you, they have not sniffed a championship in your lifetime. Mm. Correct? See, and, and- no, no, that Jason, not at all. right? I mean, and, right. And I'm a, a Knicks and Mets fan, so I know the suffering of oh. both fan bases, and wow. that's it's the hope. When you suffer so much, you're hoping too too much. Well, I'll say this: Look, I grew up in Cincinnati. I'm a Reds and Bengals oh. fan, so oh. <laughs> so I can tell you, like it it can it can get better. You yeah. may you may be waiting a while, <laughs> but it can get better. So you, I mean, obviously you have the pulse of the sport away from the deadline talk and stuff like that. There's a top teams right now that are serious, you know, and I want to know who NBA fans really should take serious as the final contender. Timberwolves, Thunder, Pacers, all kind of new faces in the top four of the conferences yeah. this season. 76ers are better expected because Maxie's become an all-star. Yep. Nurse was a smart choice. Of those four, yeah, and you kind of gave a little bit on the 76ers. Who's truly the one that can make it to the finals? Is it Timberwolves? Is it the Thunder? Who is it? Are we just throwing the Denver Nuggets out of the equation? Or are we assuming Well, no, well they're not a surprise. No, I'm just saying the surprise team. Who's realistic? Ah, got you, got Who you. Who really can do it? Who's not a just, you know, a flash in a pan? Who's legit? I think the 76ers are legit. Okay. I, I would not be surprised if they came out of the East. Now, again, it's what I said about Embiid. Like, can he stay healthy? Yeah. Um, they have another move to make so they can add another piece. Like they, they have the resources to add another piece and not take away from what they have. Okay. Um, yeah. So I think that they can be even better than they are right now. I, I like them defensively and maybe in my, you know, just my personal, for my personal satisfaction, how good would an, would an Embiid versus Jokic NBA oh, right. Finals be? Old school. Right? That's what I grew up on. I want to see that. Yeah, and I just, you know, I, I mean, I just, the two most recent MVPs yes. going head-to-head. Yes. Um, 
We, for whatever reason, Embiid seems to never be available when they play Denver, so we haven't seen yeah. that matchup a whole lot during the regular season. I would, uh, the time is now for to, to see that. OKC, I think, is legit in terms of their talent. Um, but when you've never, like, you've never been to the playoffs, I mean, I think Shea Gilgis was once with Chris Paul was there, but hmm. he wasn't. He wasn't in the role that he is now. Um, I, they're a solid playoff team, no question about it. Um, but I think they're in that that learning stage. They've, yeah. they've got to get there and and find out what it's all about before they're going to make a run. Uh, who else did you mention as as Pacers? I mean, Pacers are probably the most likely. No, nah, Pacers Pacers so can't rough. defend. Pacers just yeah. don't play. You know, we we got a glimpse of what's going to happen to them if they if they're in the playoffs in the um in the in season tournament final no. where the Lakers just just pummeled them. I mean just it's, Lakers yeah. said you can jump shoot all you want. Like <laughs> we're just gonna take you into the paint and we're gonna score every time. So yeah, I don't I don't see the Pacers in that if, among the I mean the Sixers, if that's considered a surprise, to me they're they're the likeliest choice. To, to, to getting to the finals. I'm still a believer that nobody in the West is getting past Denver. I know their bench has been a little suspect, but I just, as long as Jokic is healthy. Yep, hell yeah. Uh, and Jamal Murray is healthy. Yep. Like, people just don't have an answer. Jokic is in that, uh, in, in, in that space now of where LeBron once was. Yeah. Um, where... It's a matchup where you have to contort your defense yes. so much yeah. to stop that guy. Other guys, you're opening it up for other yeah. guys. And so they don't have to be great. They just have to be good. They just have to knock down open shots and defend like hell at the other end. And Denver is fully capable of doing that and knows that they're capable of doing that. I think that's also the important one of the important factors is, and I just talked to, oh, we talked to Aaron Gordon about this, about um, the value of having won a championship and understanding exactly the level you have to play and when you have to play it and how your team has to play together in order to win mm -hmm. a championship. Like, right. it, it sounds really simple, but... Yeah, if you've never <laughs> do. done it as a team, right? Yeah. You're always yeah. guessing, and so you're yeah. in these in these situations where you're like, "What do we do here? Like, yeah. what what's the right thing to do that's going to get us to that championship?" And when you've done it, you can do it with confidence. Like, yeah. this is what we need to do. And sometimes just that understanding is the when we're talking about like last sec seven yeah. seconds left. Like, yep. how do we defend this? Well, we've defended it on the biggest stage ever. Like, we we know what we have to do, and the other team's like, okay, like I think we should do try this, right? <laughs> yeah. It, sometimes that's the difference. So, yeah. um, that's where, like, you know, Giannis has an intuitive, you know, has has an intrinsic yeah, understanding does. of what it looks like. That's why you hear him saying what he's saying right now, right? He knows they're not good enough. Same with LeBron. Like, he knows they know what a championship team looks and feels like. And neither one of them are that at this point. All right, last question. Um, you know, just they, they're always the popular teams and, and they do well on sports not too, but how worried should the Warriors be about like the Steve Kerr situation? He's in the final year of his contract, it's probably going to be the worst season he's had in his legendary, you know, run with the Warriors. Is his departure another, you know, just you'd feel it's just going to be another element of this what's kind of maybe is the breakup of this great dynasty? And should maybe teams like the Lakers or somebody like this maybe are they going to maybe you would think if there's a chance to pursue him especially with all the issues the the blowback from players on Darvin Ham in the in the summer if he doesn't step away would Lakers go hard for Steve Kerr if he's there I would think that if Steve left the Warriors which I do think is a possibility I was kind mm -hmm. of expecting that maybe he and uh, and Bob Myers would step off at the same time huh. um, yeah. but I would think he would do the same thing as Bob's doing which is I'm I'm not 
I'm going to get out for a while. Because I don't think people really understand just what a grind it has been yeah. for both of those guys. And, and this is so undervalued. You said, like, we see the end of the dynasty coming. The dynasty really ended when Kevin Durant left. And then Steph got hurt. Clay got hurt. Draymond has been dealing with injuries. Yeah. The fact that they came back and two years later, after falling off a cliff, yeah. with the same core, won another championship, is one of the most miraculous things I've ever seen in, in in sports, like that just doesn't happen. You don't you don't go to f- whatever five NBA finals in a row, and there's there's a there's a price to be paid physically and mentally for yeah. that, which they paid, right? And then you're able to get an Andrew Wiggins and develop a Jordan Poole and like just like develop all these young guys for two years. And basically have your core rest for two years. And then you come back and you find a way to make one more run. Like, that's mind-blowing that they were able to do that. (laughs) And so people thinking like, okay, well, we just hit the reset button. Now we're going to have another dynastic run. It's like, no, you don't understand. Like, you fished that out of the pond. Like, you had no business winning that one at this point. So be thankful that you had that. And this is, I think, this is the issue that they're facing. Is one with Bob and Steve, owner Joe Lukovic. He's one of the guys that thought, okay, so now we've hit the reset. We've got Jonathan Kaminga. We've got Moses Moody. Drafted James Wyatt. Like we're just gonna, we'll just keep going, right? Mm -hmm. And it didn't really appreciate how unique Mm. Stefan, Clay, Draymond. And the way they their yeah. their synthesis yeah. and their hunger, all of the thing, all of their qualities, like you just don't go out and find that. It it it, it you don't replicate that. Um, so I don't know how we got here, but that that's, <laughs> yeah, to me, Kerr, Kerr. that Going that with chance? with with Kerr, like I I just I know I'm I'm around him a lot, like. Mm-hmm. He's worn out. The idea of going to L.A. and taking on that, you know, Man. fan base and expectation yeah. and it, it's it's a recipe for disappointment and really marring his reputation. Like he's probably taking a hit with this that Bob Myers also should be taking because he yeah. did draft. Seriously. I mean, yeah, he built this team. Yep. Right. Gave them those contracts. Yep. He, like, but he got out and people, like, <laughs> he's, he's able to avoid the, you know, yeah, the get hit. work with the commanders and all these kind of things. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. The, the, yeah. the, 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 the genius that is Bob Myers is going to solve yeah. the Washington commanders. It's like, <laughs> um, and I think he's, like, in all seriousness, I think he's, a, he is, he will help them. I, he will help the commanders. He's very good at, at, uh, developing a healthy culture. Hmm. Uh, but there's just a point where, like, again, it's a little bit like the Lakers. You, hmm. you have to, you know, you have to have time to regenerate a team. You can't, right. nobody stays at the top, no matter who they have, the entire time. So, um, I, I just, I would not be surprised if, Steve stepped away after this year, and I would think that he would take some time with his family. And he, like, obviously he can do TV. He's done TV before. He can do something. But I would think that he's, I think that he he wants to hit a personal reset button as well. This, and and this I, that was probably the last question. But this question just popped in my head just because we're talking about Steve Kerr and stuff like that. And there's this connection there. Like, and we're talking about air parents, like an NFL Belichick left he had an heir apparent that already took his job would steve kerr maybe be like an heir apparent in san antonio because popovich can't do this forever he's got connections there would, would like he take a couple of years away maybe steve kerr that, that seems like the perfect fit less pressure he had he knows the organization would that be a fit i could 
I could see that. I'd have to, you know, I'd be interested to know where, what, what his, where his family, where his kids, the age of his kids are. Mm. Um, and I do know that he loves San Diego. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I'm sure I, I wouldn't, I, I think, I think pop is probably going to coach until like he keels over. I think wow. he's one of the, I think wow. he's going to die on the job. Um, and <laughs> because he's like, that's, that's the one thing that's still, he, that I'm told that his love for coaching was regenerated coaching team USA hmm. that that kind of spark lit, lit the fire once again. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, that's not, that's not, I've heard way worse conjecture. <laughs> so Steve going and taking over the reins in, in San Antonio, it makes perfect sense.